thank you. It was possible to travel around the world in 80 days, hence the name of the, of the book. The rest of the club said, no, that's not possible. And he said, yes, it is. Let me show you how. And then he and Passepartout walked through everything, and they actually did. They traveled around the world, which is round, due to a Polish guy. <laughs> and they actually managed to finish the, the journey in 81 days. But because the, 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 the planet is round and they were traveling on the opposite direction, they gave one day and they won the bet. If that was a Toastmasters club, that meant that he said he saw the red card, but he wasn't clapped off the stage. So he actually won the, the bet. This is a great metaphor for life and for achieving the, un the unachievable, but this is fiction. But then, 80 years later, in the 50s, there's another story I would like to tell you about. It's the story of the four-minute mile. Okay, there's an athletics race called the mile. We don't use it here. Nowadays we run the 1500 meters, but there's a distance called the mile, which is 1600 meters. And until the 50s, it was practically, practically impossible to run the mile under four minutes. No one could ever run the mile under four minutes. There was even a theory that that was the boundaries, the limits of the human body. It's not possible to run that fast for that long. So no one will ever be able to run the mile under four minutes. Until Mr. Roger Bannister did. He ran the mile in three minutes and 59. This in 1954. This was a world record, the world record of the mile, 359. And he lasted, you want to try, try to guess how long this world record lasted? 54 days. 54 days. Yeah. A month and a half later, someone else beats the four minute mile. In the next couple of years, dozens of other athletes beat the four minute mile. And nowadays, it's just a, an average score. And if you want to be a professional athlete, you have to run at least a mile under four minutes. So, this is not fiction, this actually happened, and this just proves a theory. Everything is unachievable until someone does it. And after that, if you master the process, and if you simplify and rationalize the process, then even the most unachievable things, like running a mile under four, four minutes, or traveling around the world in 80 days, it's actually possible. It's only a matter of a process. What we're going to try to achieve today is the unachievable. We are going to try to write a speech under 80 minutes. Okay? It might sound alarming, but um, let's go back a little bit and let me put it like this. Is it possible to write a great speech in 80 minutes? No. No. What's the difference between a manual speech and the competition speech? Which, if you have to choose one, a competition speech and a manual speech, what would you choose? What would you say is the best one or the strongest one? Why? Why is that? Exactly. Because of practice. Well, I would say that there are twelve steps for writing a speech. Twelve steps. Let me just use my marker for the first time. The first one would be definition. Sorry? Denial. Denial, exactly. I don't have to write a speech. Yeah, that's the first step. Okay? Definition. We have to decide what we're going to do. We'll go, we'll go longer and longer on each one of the topics later. The second one would be the line out. Actually preparing the speech. The third one would be the first draft or the delivery. Where we actually have something written or at least pinpointed and now we have something to say. And then the fourth one would be to practice and rewrite. And when I say practice, I say practice in front of an audience. 
Don't fool yourselves and don't, don't, don't pretend like, oh, I'm practicing, I'm standing in front, of this, in front of a mirror, I'm practicing my speech. No, you're not. If you're practicing your speech in front of the mirror, it's the same thing as you're practicing guitar while playing with your fingers. It might help if you're trying to reach a difficult position, like it might help to, to stand in front of the mirror if you're trying to rehearse a, a position or a stance or a, a movement, a risky movement, but you're not actually practicing public speaking because you're missing the point, you're missing the public. You're just speaking, you're back practicing speaking. So if you feel comfortable standing in front of a mirror, by all means do so, but that's not really practicing. Practicing is standing in front of an audience and doing it. And then rewriting. And if you remember, some of you were here last, well, not here in Woods last year, my, my workshop was pretty much about rewriting. That's what I believe the only way to achieve something really, really good, which is you do something and then you do an auto-analysis. You identify what went good, what went bad. What went good, we should do it more often. What went bad, should be removed. So, stage number four would be practice and rewrite. Stage number five, practice and rewrite. Stage number six, practice and rewrite. Until stage 12, which is practice and rewrite. And we do it all over again. When is your great speech finished? Any guesses? Never. never. A great speech is never finished. That's why it's great. Because it can always be improved. So, today, if we only have 80 to 90 minutes, we don't have time for stages 5 to 12, and not even for stage 4. But we can do the definition, the line out, and the first draft, and the first delivery. And then we write, if you really want to do so, and I encourage you to do so, we'll do it at home, and then you invite me, and I'll come back next year, and we'll do it again. And for the next 12 years, I'll be always at the Polish GLI. I would love to do it. Okay. So. First and before we dwell into these three first steps of the speech writing process, let me just tell a little bit about uh, arts in general and the theory of narrative. I promise this won't be that boring. Okay, one rule. This is the only rule that we're going to have today, because the next thing I'm going to say is about rules and about the fact that there are no rules. So there, there is one rule. Uh, and the rule is, there's no break for questions. Okay? Not because I'm a really, really bad guy, no. Because there's no break for questions. But there's room for questions, just raise your arm and ask away. Okay? You raise your arm, I can see everyone in the room, want to test it. You just raise your arm over there, and you touch your chin. There you go. You're touching your nose. I can see everyone in the room, even the person standing at the door. Hello. There's someone on the other side of the door. Yep, getting unwanted attention now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you ever have a question, just raise your arm. If I really want to finish the point I'm finishing that moment, I will finish it and then I'll give you the opportunity to make the questions. Okay, so is there any question until now? No. Okay. Let's go on. So the only rule on this workshop is if you have a question, just raise your arm. A fact about arts in general, and what we're dealing with here, it's a creative process, an artistic creative process. Well, my, my academic background was um, theory of narrative, so I learned how to write stories, and I try to apply this every day when I write speeches and when I write stories. I like to write speeches like I'm writing a story, and I like to write stories like I'm writing a speech. It works both ways. So, in this creative pro you're raising your arm. You're, no, oh, no you don't have a question. Okay. <laughs> in this creative process, there are no rules. In science, there are rules. You can say if you do this, you achieve that. There's a scientific process. Maths, maths are facts. Two plus two is four, not six. Okay. In arts, there are no rules. There are tendencies. What's this about tendencies? A tendency is when someone tells you, well, we've been doing this for the last 2,000 years, and it has worked. So if you do it this way, it will probably work again. It's not a rule. If you don't do it that way, that doesn't mean it's wrong. 
Okay? If we slap a pie in a, in a clown's face, people will probably laugh. Sometimes we laugh just at the idea of slapping a pie against some, a clown's face. It doesn't mean you are going to. It's not science. Okay? So it's a tendency. You might want to slap a pie into a, into a clown's face if you want to get a laughter. It might not work. And if everyone does it exactly the same way, well, we lose the unexpected and it probably starts losing its funny bit a little bit. But we're working with tendencies today. Okay? What I'm going to share with you, it's not a rule at all, and it's not even my personal point of view, it's my process. It's the set of tendencies that I've learned and that work for me. They might not work for you, and they even might work for you and not work next time because they're not rules, they're only tendencies. So use them carefully. Okay? So, in order to understand stories, we need to understand the most basic of concepts, which is the classical structure. And the classical structure means that every story has three acts. So, if we had to divide a story in three parts, how would we do it? How would we call the first, the second, and the third part? Any guesses? Beginning, middle, and end. It's as simple as that. Okay? So, the universal symbol second and third acts is the Roman number. Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. Okay? So, let's imagine that a story has this timeline. From point 1 to point 2, from beginning to the end. Every story has three acts. Someone says, Jean-Luc Godard actually said every story has three acts, not necessarily that order. We're not going that far, but it's a fact. Well, a tendency. Let's work with stories that have a beginning, a middle, and an end in a chronological way. We start from the beginning, and then the middle, and then the end. And some of you are now thinking, how does this relate with speeches? Well, in every way. Because stories and speeches, just like I said, are very similar in their structure. So, every story starts with a beginning, and then a middle, and then an end, and for this workshop, we're working, we're going to work with a rule, under lots of commas, that is called the 25-50-25 rule. And the basic principle of this rule is that the second act is always the longest. So, if we have to divide it, we would take 25% of our time in the first act, 50% in the second act, and 25 in the third act. Well, the cornerstone of this rule is that the second act is always the longest, so if we're not exactly at 25%, it doesn't matter, it's, it's more a limit. Like, the first act should never take more than 25% of the time, the third act should never take more than 25% of the time, so we might be working with a 20, 60, 20, doesn't matter, but we'll set ourselves these boundaries. A quarter of the time for the beginning, a quarter of the time for the end. So, now we have these two points here, which in the theory of narrative are called plot points. Okay, any questions so far? Does anyone has a guess of uh, what a plot point is, or what it means, or what it works for? Sorry? Kind of a turn story. Exactly. They are turning points. Well, um, let's take a, a classical story. Uh, a knight it has to rescue a princess that has been kidnapped by a dragon and it's kept away along in the tower far, far away. In the beginning of the story, we have to set up the situation, we have to introduce the characters, we have to know that this story is passed with a knight, that there's a princess that has been kidnapped, that there's a dragon that kidnapped the girl, that there's a tower that's far, far away. We have to have the, the time schedule where the, the, the action is happening. So have all this information, we have to put it in the first act. The second act is where the action actually happens. When the knight prepares to fight the dragon, when the knight discovers where the tower is, when the knight discovers what the weak point of the dragon is, let's pick Star Wars. Everyone's familiar with the story of Star Wars 1, well, 4, A New Hope? Okay, roughly. In the beginning, 
In the galaxy far, far away, we meet Luke Skywalker, we meet Princess Leia, who's been kidnapped actually, we meet Darth Vader, we meet R2, we meet all the characters. By this point, we know that there's a big ship called the Death Star, and we know there's only one way to destroy it. Okay? In the second act, we see everything. All the, the troubles, all the adventures, and in the end, we have a resolution. Something happens. We know how to kill the dragon. We know how to destroy the Death Star. Every story has an ending, not necessarily a good one, but every story has an ending. We need to have a delivery of what we promised in the first and second act. Okay? So in the third act, we need to know if the knight kills the dragon, if Luke Skywalker destroys the Death Star, and so on and so on. Okay? So this works the same way for speeches. If we have to separate a speech, and you can think in any kind of speech, an informative speech, an entertaining speech, a business presentation, we can still have the first, the second, and the third acts. Okay? Now, uh, would you please help me and try to identify what the plot point one and plot point two would be? What would we need to know at the end of plot point one in a speech? Who's Sorry? And we should know who's good mm -hmm. and why they're doing that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Where, who, when? What's the problem? What's the problem? Okay, let's summarize it. In one, in one sentence, what we need to know. It's everything that you just said in one sentence. Describe the background. Imagine the situation. Well, by the end of the first act in speech, put it very, putting it very, very simply, we need to know what we're going to talk about. That's just it. There's if by, if by a quarter, give or take, of your speech, your audience still doesn't know what they're going to be listening about, you're probably in trouble. Okay? So this is the plot point one for a speech. What are we going to talk about? Let's call it PP1 here. Okay. And then we have PP2, plot point two. Plot point two, as you just said, it's turning point two. So, what do we need to know when we reach plot point two? Or what does it mean? What's, if it's a turning point, where are we turning to? We know the result. What's happened to the problem? Mm -hmm. Alright. Summarize. More. Yes, it's a conclusion. It's the beginning of the conclusion. We know. We need to, to understand what happened so far, and we need to summarize it. So if we have to put it in a sentence, it would be, well, my point is. Okay? If we're doing a presentation, and we've been talking already for three quarters of our presentation, we begin the last stage of our presentation, which would, which would mean, well, this is what I mean, and this is what I want you to take home. Okay? So, There you go. Now we have uh, points of identification, points that we need to identify in order to, to build a speech. Well, I like to um, I like to make a metaphor with cooking. I love metaphors with cooking, as you've seen, uh, speaking of pierogi and everything. Let's pretend now that a speech is not a story and a speech is a cake. Okay? We're building a cake. And cakes use the same rules as stories and as all of all arts. We don't need to do a cake exactly the same way all the time. But if we do use the same kind of tendencies and the same kind of background rules, we're probably doing a cake. So in the first step, if we are going to bake a cake, what's the first thing that we need to do? First of all, <laughs> ingredients, Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. Well, that, that's, that's point zero, yeah. Over here, the, our, our friend said, we need to define or to decide what kind of cake we're going to do. Yeah, that's point one. Yeah, As, assuming that we already know that. Preheat the oven, exactly. Well, creating all the conditions to, to make the cake. 
So step one would be setting up the ingredients, preheating the oven, creating all the conditions, doing what we call in, in storytelling and in speeches, doing the setup. So during stage one, we need to provide our audience with everything they will need to learn or to know or to have in order to make the rest of the cake. Okay? Another metaphor that I like to do is about the bridge. And it all works with three parts. Okay? So this is one margin of the river. Can everyone see the river over here? Oh, this is the river. Okay. This is the fish. Okay, and this is the bridge. Okay. I would never win a drawing contest either. <laughs> so, in this metaphor, this margin of the river is Act 1, this margin of the river is Act 2, this margin of the river is Act 3, and this margin of the river is Act 2. So, in Act 1, we have our reality right now, what the audience already knows what they have, and we have to provide them with everything they need in order to take a journey. The journey is Act 2, where we're actually explaining or solving the problem, or presenting a product, or telling a story, or anything like that. And Stage 3 is the new reality. We are already in the other margin, so we already provided the audience with something new. How is their life now, now that they know, or they, that they have this that we have, we've provided them? So. I'm going to end with all the metaphors and we'll start working because it's a workshop, like David said yesterday, it's a workshop, not a lecture, so it means you're actually you're going to work. So now that we have all the basic concepts that you need, we need to start working, start making our game, okay? So, we are going to write a speech today. What is our speech going to be talking about? I have absolutely no idea. Pierogi. Probably about Pierogi. So, as we were going to, as we were seeing the, the several steps of the speech, first step would be to define, and just like uh, our partner said over here, to decide which kind of cake we're cooking. So, we need to decide and define two things. We need to decide the theme and the subject. Does anyone want to try to guess or tell us? The rest of the audience, what's the difference between the theme and the subject of a speech or a story? I see a confused face on Piotr. I studied for this. Okay, differences between the theme and the subject. Over there. I, I agree with the first part of what you just said, not with the second part. Um, yeah, the theme is the general concept of what we're talking about. Any other guesses? Sorry, sorry. Can you speak louder? I don't believe they're, they're listening to you over there. more essential. Well, let's establish by for, for, for the moment the, diff, the main difference between the theme and the subject. Do you remember my speech, the shots? Does anyone remember the speech? Good. Good to know. I'm glad to still remember it. Well, what was my speech about? Okay. Let me put it in other way. What, what was the subject of my speech? The subject was basketball, Michael Jordan. What was the theme of my speech? Taking responsibility and taking a chance. The subject is what we're actually saying, and the theme is what we mean. Okay? I can speak about basketball and not be speaking about basketball at all. Or I can speak about basketball and be speaking about basketball. The theme and the subject may be the same thing. But most of the times, or many of the times, they're not. And that's the first thing that we need to decide when we're going to start a project called writing a speech. We need to decide both things. Which one's more important? If you had to choose, well, we have 
Two gateways into this jewelry, you have to choose one. Which one will you choose? We're picking the theme or the subject? The theme over here. Does anyone disagree? You agree. Okay. Sometimes some people say the subject. I think it depends, actually. I think it depends. You can, you can either choose both at the same time, you can choose one and then discover the other. Let me tell you a secret. When I wrote the shot, I wanted to write a speech about basketball. And then I discovered, well, I want to tell a story about basketball, and I really like this story, and this is a personal story, and that's a key ingredient to baking a good cake. Speak about something that you really care about. You cannot convey emotions if you are not feeling them. I cannot pass you the passion if I'm not feeling the passion. So my first goal was, I really want to tell a story about something I really, really care about. But the audiences, they don't care about basketball as much as I do. So I need to find a theme with which I can convey something of a surplus to this audience. So first I have a subject and then I have a theme. That worked for me that time. That doesn't mean it works every time. We can do it the opposite way. I can, I can want to speak about something that is very difficult for me to speak about, or it's very difficult for an audience to understand, and I can use a metaphor. I can speak of something so particular, so personal, that it would be hurtful or hard to understand if I went directly to the subject. And then I decide, well, I will speak about something else and I'll create a metaphor. So I can both go with deciding the subject and then finding a theme, or deciding a theme and then finding the subject, okay? But point one of building a speech is defining them both. There's a, a Portuguese saying, well, it's not a Portuguese saying, it's a saying by Saramago, the Portuguese Nobel Prize winner, and he said at some point in his life that if you have nothing to say, you have absolutely no right whatsoever to say things, because you have nothing to say. So, this applies directly to speeches. If you don't have a point of view, if you don't have a subject or a theme that you like to share with an audience, then please do something else. Watch TV, practice sports. Okay? So, if you want to write a speech, first step is decide what your theme and or your subject is. And that's what we need to do now, because we are going to write a speech in 18 minutes. So, I have absolutely no idea what we're going to speak about. It's not going to be my speech, it's going to be our speech. I'm just a team captain, if you want, me to, if you want to call me something. Right now, we need to discuss and decide what we're going to speak about. So. The discussion for suggestions is open right now. Raise your hands. <laughs> something with the suit. Okay. Let me write in the board some of the options and then we'll decide. Just lost my... Suits in general or this suit? Suits. This suit. Okay. One more suggestion before I interrupt you. Over there. Star Wars. Star Wars. There you go. Okay. Well, let me interrupt you now and we'll go back to this in a minute. Last metaphor, and I promise you this is the last one. A speech is also like a Christmas tree. You use Christmas trees in Poland, right? What's the difference between a tree and a Christmas tree? Decoration? What does a Christmas tree have that uh, a normal tree, a regular tree, doesn't? Lights, meaning? Meaning is nice. Yes, a special event. There's a special event. Actually, I'm looking for three things. Decoration is one of them. What else? What else? There's something at the top of a Christmas tree that is not at the top of a star. A star. Not Star Wars. Just one star. And then something else. A basis. Because regular trees, they have roots. They don't need to be standing on, on anything. They are trees. A Christmas tree is a special kind of tree. They're not growing. They're not even standing if you just put it in your living room. It will fall. 
we need to have a big base, okay? So we have three things that make a Christmas tree a Christmas tree, and we can still make a metaphor with speeches and with stories, taking this example. Well, let me write a Christmas tree, and you've seen my, writing, my, my drawing skills already. The, the thing in which the speech stands on. The basis. You cannot build anything if you don't have a strong basis, otherwise the tree will fall. Act 3, which is uh, what we really want to show to the audience, what, what's, what's special about our speech, what would it be? My suggestion, the star. The star would be Act 3. That's what makes my special tree special and different than all the others. And then stage two would be the structure. What takes us from point one to point three? So what's so special and so important about act two, the decoration? In this metaphor, in which story or a speech is a Christmas tree, what does the decoration stand for? What in a speech or a story is the decoration of the Christmas tree? Anecdotes? What did you say? Body language, more. Feelings. Exactly, everything. Examples, feelings, body language, anecdotes. Let's just sum it all up in one word, information. Everything that we want to convey, to transmit, it's the, all the decoration of our Christmas tree. And if we have a small Christmas tree, let's say a five to seven minute Christmas tree, you can only put in that tree a certain amount of decoration. If you have 90 minutes of Christmas tree, you can put some more information. So, the two things that we need to do next, especially when we're choosing or selecting or defining our theme and our subject, is the amount of decorations that we have. If you pick any subject, you will know some things about it. About some subjects, you'll know a lot of things. About other subjects, you'll just know two or three facts. So, your box of decoration should be appropriate to the size of the tree that we're going to decorate, right? If we don't have enough decoration to decorate our Christmas tree, what do we need to do? We need to do something that we don't have time to do now, which is research. That would be stage 1.2, between definition and the line out. We would need to do research in order to gather more information in order to decorate our tree appropriately. If we have a 90 minute Christmas tree, we cannot have just two or three decorations. We need to have much more information than if it was just a small piece of, of knowledge or a small story. So, this is what we have to have in account when defining our theme and our subject. We need to speak about something that we, as a group, have enough information to speak about during five to seven minutes, okay? So, just before we were starting to, to do this presentation, I was chatting with some people over there by the door, and they were saying, you can speak about nuclear physics. Yes, if the audience has enough information to, speak, to provide to the speech, we can write a speech about nuclear physics. We probably don't. So, with this in mind, Let's continue picking up uh, a theme. We have to have, as a group, in enough information to speak five to seven minutes about it. So, we already have three suggestions. More. This TLI. This TLI. Any more? Out of organized great TLI. I just removed the cap of the marker instead of the cap of the bottle. I was starting to drink the marker. <laughs> How to organize a TLI. Okay. Another hint. If you're writing something, you should always write it for yourself at first. 
this meaning, if you're writing stories, you write the stories you would like to read. So the same thing applies for a speech. If you're writing a speech, let's write the speech we would love to read, to, to listen to. Okay? So isn't there anything else, any other suggestion that we would like to listen to a, a five to seven minute speech about? Sleep. Sleep. It was a long party last night, wasn't it? The only time slot in a TLI or a district conference which is worse than after lunch in the last day is before lunch in the last day. <laughs> okay, we already have six suggestions. Any more suggestions or we'll just pick one of these? Right now, we're picking, obviously, a subject. Okay, not necessarily... So, any more suggestions or should we move on? Acquaintances or relations? Okay. Relations, acquaintances. One last suggestion before we pick one. We're done. Okay, now we have to choose one. Suits, this suit in particular, Star Wars, how to organize the TLI in general, this TLI in particular, sleep and relations and acquaintances. I would suggest sleeping during this TLI, how to organize a proper TLI, Star Wars related, wearing this suit. That would be nice. <laughs> so, which one are we going to use? Sleep. Sleep, there you go. <laughs> easy, easy. Okay. So this is our theme. Our subject, sorry. For the reminder of this session, we'll be writing a speech about sleep. That's our subject. So now what's our theme? What's our approach on it? Should we speak about the process of sleeping? How to get to sleep? How to sleep properly? How much sleep do we need? What's going to be our point of view? What are we going to speak about over there? Time management regarding sleep. <laughs> okay. I usually don't get to do many things while I'm sleeping, but that's just me. <laughs> okay, time management. <laughs> How do you sleep in Poland? <laughs> There was some, something before this, uh, problem solving, how to survive TLI without sleep. Problem solving, I would say that's a, that's a problem to be solved, how to survive TLI without sleep. That's referring to me. Sorry? That's my problem. That's, yeah, that's, that's your problem, that's half of us problem. <laughs> Sorry, one at a time over here? Sorry. Why we need to sleep? Okay. Well, everything that we're doing here, we are picking our point of view, but this is all precious information because one of them is going to be our point of view, what we really want to say, but we can touch all the other subjects in the way. So we're going to use this, this page. Come again? Why do we need to sleep? Up there. How to wake up? How to wake up? Mm -hmm. How are you sleeping, Paul? I'm not curious. <laughs> okay, more suggestions. Which bed is more comfortable? Which bed is more comfortable? At this point, any bed. This, these chairs. Okay, more. Have a sleep or just a nap? Good. Should we have a sleep or just a nap? Sleep or nap? The answer to that question is, how long is this workshop going to take? <laughs> how long do we sleep? How long do we sleep? 
How long do we sleep or how long should we sleep? Okay. Your point of view is how long do we sleep at all or how long should we sleep? Okay. How long do we sleep? What are the consequences of the long party? <laughs> Good. This speech is writing itself. I'm just writing words down. The consequences of a long party. Okay, more. Oh, nice. You finally woke up. There you go. Okay, to try, to try to say the same thing in four to five words. Just to put an idea, a simple idea. Technology of sleeping. Technology of sleeping. Is this okay? Technology of sleeping. <laughs> I'm going to turn the page now, turn it back on. We should sleep. Who is Michal? We should ask him with you. How large is your bed? <laughs> we'll just take turns. Okay. How to 
get on sleep, on sleep, but still fly during the day. I would love to know that. It doesn't work for me. Usually what happens is I'm sleepwalking, like someone said up there. Sorry, a little bit louder? Uh huh. So you're suggesting ch changing the subject now? And <laughs> Sorry. So just give us a suggestion. Just give us a suggestion. Okay, so your suggestion is that our next suggestions should not be directly related to sleep. Okay. Maybe something about our dreams during sleep. How to remember our dreams after we wake up. Conscious dreaming, that is. Conscious, conscious dreaming. Okay. Well, let me spoil something for you. The next step would be, after we decide what our theme and our subject is, we would need to pinpoint topics. We're just providing ourselves with dozens of topics while still picking up the subject. So we're doing a great job. So, let's go on. I'm sorry. You can do that. He's learning how to learn money during sleep. So, I want to attend your workshop. Okay, any more? Lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming. Uh, is this the same thing as conscious dreaming? Yeah. Okay, so conscious. Lucy. Okay. More suggestions. Your worst nightmare. That's great for metaphors also, because it can be your worst nightmare or your worst nightmare. Sorry? I got mother-in-law. Oh, the mother-in-law. The mother-in-law is your worst nightmare. I understand. Okay. Any more suggestions or should we move on and pick one? Okay. How to leave? Sorry? Insomnia. Okay, that's that's a great last one. Okay, insomnia. So let's go back and read out all the suggestions of themes that we have come up with. Time management. How to survive TLI without sleeping. Problem solving. Why you need to sleep? How to wake up. Which bed is more comfortable? Sleeping or napping? How long do we sleep? Consequences of a long party? We're all related, we're all speaking about the same thing. Every year, the technology of sleeping, technology that helps us to sleep or to get up. Who should we be sleeping with? It's probably the most popular. How not to sleep throughout your life, something more metaphorically. More metaphorical, don't sleep out your life. How to cut out sleep but still thrive during the day. Sleepwalking, lucid or conscious dreaming. How to earn money during sleep. Your worst nightmare and insomnia. Okay, let's choose one, which is not the only one that we're going to be working with, but the one that should be our point of view. Going back to the structure that we were talking about, at the end of Act 1, our audience should know by then that we are stop we're talking about sleep, but we are talking about this subject or this theme in particular, okay? So that's just our point of view. doesn't mean that we cannot speak about all the other ones as decoration of our Christmas tree, okay? So, how to not sleep out your life, okay? I really need your opinions here, otherwise we just have one vote and it's a terrible election. Nice, 
nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we sleepwalking. Okay, let's let's do something else now. We need to pinpoint the ones we are choosing. Sleep out your life. Your uh, doesn't matter. Two votes. Uh, sleepwalking one. Actually, you can connect them. We can connect them all. That's why I'm selecting a few. Because we can, we can then make just one. There you go. All of them. All of them, yeah. We're going back and we're picking up the other ones as information. Okay, more. Insomnia. Can we relate it also? Probably. Some people cannot sleep and some people cannot wake up. Okay, what else? Are we going to work with these four and connect them all in one? Okay. Okay, so let's just uh, try, try to summarize the whole idea into one sentence. How's the proverb that you're going to, that you're saying? As you might imagine, I have no idea what you just said. I'm sorry? Don't sleep out your life. Okay. Okay. And uh, sleepwalking, we can speak about it directly or uh, metaphorically, right? And the consequences of a long party, both. Time to first do a break? No break? Okay. Break. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes break. Ten minutes break. Okay. Yeah. So let's all think about this, sink ourselves in the, this idea, and we'll be back in ten minutes and we'll start working this week. Well, during the, during the break and before we, while people are still going on inside the room, during the break something interesting happened. I just received this and this is from the people from Krakow and they said, we think it's a shame that you've been to Łódź and to Warsaw and to Poznan and you've never been to Krakow. So they, they've offered me a guide of Krakow and an invitation and they said they liked something about liking my lecture and everything. It hasn't finished yet, so you obviously didn't like it that much. You're not even paying attention. But thank you very much, Krakow, and I will do my best and uh, hope to see you there one day. <laughs> During the break, we also, do, we also did a um, couple of things that I was talking about. I was very worried about the rewriting. That's, as I've said last year, and I've said it again, rewriting is, for me, the most important, important part of the process. So during the break, I was trying to figure out how to solve the things that went less good. Let's not say bad. The things that went less good in the first part. People are tired. We have to keep that in account, into account. So during the break, I was uh, trying to, to ask people around, what can we do better? Uh, what can we improve? How can we engage people? Because they've slept three to four hours at most. So, yeah, I wish, exactly. So one of the suggestions that we came up with was to try to create a funnier approach to the speech. We are all creating a speech, so we'll probably try a funnier approach because it's easier to follow and it's easier to catch your attention. If we're going to do things very seriously, people will probably start to zone out and daydream about what we're talking about. So we'll probably try to, to do something funnier. And we already heard one suggestion that came during the break uh, that it makes lots of sense to me. I just want to start pointing that out. It's not a decision. I'm not making the decisions. We all are. But uh, a couple of friends over here suggested that one approach for our speech would be to sum things up and to tell a story about the consequences of long partying, doing a backwards story, 
starting this morning and recollecting what we remember for, from the last days of the TLI. And most of us won't remember who we were sleeping with. He's probably, oh, he's getting it. We were talking about you and your sleeping partners. <laughs> Okay, so that's just one suggestion. What we came out with uh, during the break, and this is just a starting point, again, it's not a decision, it, it, it was that probably we could start doing a speech about the consequences of not sleeping and then make it a metaphor for not sleeping out your life. And we're not just picking one, we're picking a general subject and then having underneath uh, a bonus track or, uh, of uh, deeper meaning. Okay, so that's just a starting point. What else do you suggest? I want to hear your thoughts while you are still awake, which will last for three to five minutes. Go on. <laughs> what do you think? Have you thought about it during the break? Were the, was the coffee too hot? Were the cookies too sweet? Tell me about your thoughts. I've got a question maybe in general. Mm -hmm. Is there any relation between and In this case or in general? Okay, the, the theme is what you want to talk about, the subject is what you're actually talking about. Actually, there's a concept called a uh, foundational phrase, which is um, it, it, you should try to write everything you want to say, your, your theme, into one sentence. It's the, called the foundational phrase. That's, that's ideally, like utopically, you should be able to sum it all up in one sentence. That's what we're trying to, to, to pick up here. Our subject is going to be sleep. We're going to write a speech about sleeping. What is our point of view? Is what we're trying to... So, so something like insomnia is not a subject. It should be like some kind of idea. Insomnia is something. It can be. What we need now is, by the end of Act 1, by the end of the first quarter, give or take, of the speech, you should be able to understand wha what we are going to talk about. So, if our subject uh, is, if our theme is insomnia, then by a, a quarter of the speech, well, we're doing a five to seven minute speech, so after two, the, well, two, around two minutes, you should be able to identify, to identify well, the speech is going to dwell about insomnia. Okay, so that's, that's just a cornerstone that we're trying to set so that we can build up from that. Does it make sense? Did you...? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can write another speech about lying. <laughs> I will, I'll try to, to make it more clear during the rest of the, of the workshop, but feel free to just raise your hand whenever you have a doubt. Okay? So, any suggestions? What should we, should we do next? Are we, okay. I would list all the consequences maybe two different rows and have positive and negative consequences of partying all night. Mm -hmm. And then starting from that I would go on. Okay. What do you see what do you think of this? Does it make sense to you? It's okay. Mm -hmm. We could we could then from from some of these we could make a relation to the general topic of sleeping out the life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, we are working with a five to seven minute speech here, so I would say that we can go like uh, ten points, ten, ten topics at most, okay? For the whole structure of the speech, ten, ten, ten topics at most, because we don't have time to speak about more than that, okay? So that would be a good idea to make a list of all the good and bad things that can happen to you when you're sleep deprived, especially in an occasion like a TLI. Great, okay, so let's go, let's move on with that. Let me just grab a marker, they're here. Okay, one, two, three, go. Two rows, these are the good consequences. We're going to find very little or very few for here, right? And the bad consequences of little sleeping during... Um, no, long parking. Long parking. 
consequences of long parking. Okay, consequences of long parking. Okay, let's let's speed up the process. We have about 20 to 25 minutes to deliver a speech. So just say there are no bad ideas, only stupid ideas, but even the stupid ideas, they're not necessarily bad. So bring on all your ideas, stupid or not. Come on. Make friends, it's a good or a bad thing? Sometimes it's bad, if they're bad friends, I don't know. Okay, make friends. <laughs> Sorry? Positive feeling. Positive feelings, isn't that too general? Give me one example of a positive feeling. I'm happy. Besides I am tired, I'm happy. Okay. So something here in the middle. Tired but happy, right? Which is a bad thing and a good thing at the same time. There you go. More. I'm sorry? Hangover. Dancing. We're only listening good things. We really like to party here, right? Dancing. Okay. Hangover. Headache, hangover, it's the same thing. No? No? Okay. Hangover is much more than headache. You seem like you could do a workshop on hangover, couldn't you, Peter? Of course. Okay, that's right. Money spending. There you go. Can you all read over there? Yes. Okay, money spending. <laughs> you work in finance, don't you? Okay, money spending, making money during the sleep, they're the only suggestions coming up from that section of the room. <laughs> okay, more. There you go. More, more, keep them coming. Experience. Bad and good. good experience. Bad experience. <laughs> so I should write experience on both because there are good experiences. Okay. So one of the good experiences is good experiences and one of the bad experiences is bad experiences. <laughs> High risk of getting attacked in the street in the night. Attacked? That someone, you know, in the night, Rob. someone comes up with a knife. And says, risk of being robbed. Risk of robbery. Lacking memory. Lacking memory. Lacking memory. Well, I would say lifelong memory. <laughs> there's there's a, a Portuguese comedian I like a lot. He has a, this great joke. He says, I wrote a great joke about Alzheimer's, but I can't remember. <laughs> Lacking memory. Lifelong memories. Lifelong memories? Yeah, memories that stay for, for life. And that you didn't want to, right? <laughs> Can I put it here on finding someone to sleep with? <laughs> Lifelong memories. <laughs> uh, this is actually a bad one. No, I'm not sure. Okay. Not enough money for breakfast. Not enough money for breakfast. So I'm I'm putting it. Not enough for breakfast. No breakfast. Now negative. And then no breakfast. Right. Alcohol doesn't count as breakfast, okay? Doesn't no, count, no. You cannot drive at the party. You cannot drive. You cannot drive. Exactly. And then you're missing on interesting uh, workshops because you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing worse than speaking to an audience after a big party. Speaking to an audience is not. I'm not going there. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> Actually, death is really connected with sleep out your life. <laughs> yes, if you die, you've slept out your life. It makes a point. So, the, the, trying not to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we already have a few. 
we need something now. Um, we need a structure. Um, let me make a hole here. We're not actually going to write down your speech, obviously. Otherwise, it would be a text and not a speech. It's not a, a written text. There are some pinpoints, and then we're going to improvise on them, okay? It's, it is said that the greatest improvise is very, very worked on. So that's pretty much how we're going to, to do. We're going to pinpoint the structure of, let's say, 10 points, and then we'll just speak about it, okay? Now, we know that we need a three-act structure, and we know that we need two plot points, one that sets up what we're going to talk about, and the other one that introduces the conclusion. So this is what we are talking about, okay? So, picking up all of these topics and some more that we can come up with, we need to start thinking out which ones would be useful for an introduction, for setting up what we are talking about, and which ones would be useful for a conclusion, okay? This is a good story to end with because it summarizes our points of view, okay? So from now on, we're thinking about these ones and the other ones that we are still thinking about and trying to find out good, good uh, topics for the introduction and good topics for the ending, the conclusion, and the other ones would be good topics to the second act. Okay, so going on. More suggestions. Mm hmm it's good. Okay. And we can we can relate that with finding someone to sleep with and uh, lacking of memories, exactly. Probably a little bit of a headache or a hangover. Okay. Not having enough money for breakfast is probably the, the following step, okay? So we're now going somewhere. Does anyone disagree? Does someone want to add up something else? Is this a good starting point for our subject, for our speech? I have just one question. Uh, no. Can I have more? No. Uh, just one is a simple question. Should we think about how we're going to end the meeting? Uh, I mean, this sentence. So, my point is that. <laughs> Not necessarily a sentence, so my point is, but yes, something that means that. Do we already know how we're going to end the, the speech or it will just pop up somewhere in the process? No, that's that's the next thing. When you're building something, you should always build the, the beginning and the end, and then the middle comes in, in between. So, someone came up with a, a good starting point, the next thing we need is a good finishing point. We know where we're starting, we need to know what the other margin of the river is, and then we'll structure all the ideas so we get there, okay? So, um, we have a suggestion, should we stick up with this? Do you, you suggest something else? Is this a good starting point? This is obviously a, a, a story-like speech. This is the speech, this is a speech in which we are going to tell a story, not necessarily true, just a, a way of conveying information. So, does anyone want to change anything or should we go up with this? Okay, this is a good starting point, so we're going to start with, sum it up with, in one sentence. Yes. Waking up next to a stranger? No? Or? I woke up six, seven. The walk of shame. The walk of shame. So you walk up somewhere else and you don't even know where. And you don't have enough to... Okay. So we'll start with the walk of shame. Okay. <laughs> Piotr doesn't know what the walk of shame is. We can do a workshop on that. Okay. Well, let's, let's keep in mind what our point is, okay? So, our goal here would be the consequences of long partying, okay? That's what we want the people to understand by the end of the first uh, couple of ideas, okay? So we always have to keep in mind where, where we want to go, okay? So, we can start our story or our speech with a walk of shame, either if that's a, a true story or not, it doesn't matter, okay? But what we really want is to point out the consequences of long parting, especially if you are during a TLI, okay? So, 
Where should we go next? Probably use the idea of uh, not having enough money for breakfast, right? Okay. Feel free to disagree, okay? I'm not making any decision. There you go. There you go. Great point, okay? Breakfast, uh, eating the cookies, okay. Eating the cookies on the conference. Lots of water. Okay, so now we have a starting story. Okay, we already have a starting story. We're starting our speech with waking up, doing a walk of shame, being terribly hungover, hungry, and we come directly to the conference where we can feast on cookies and drink lots of tea. Okay, so this is an interesting story. Now we need to turn it into a speech that conveys a message, otherwise, it's just an anecdote. Okay, so Probably this is a good time to define where we're going to end, okay? What's, what's our conclusion going to be? Let's use whatever we have here and any other ideas that you can come up with, okay? So, in order for this speech to make sense and not be just a joke and not, a, not just a funny story, we need to make it go into a given direction so we can convey a message and make it meaningful, okay? Let's keep in mind that uh, don't sleep out your life is something that we would like to it's a subject that we would like to touch okay so that's probably it can be a humoristic speech a funny speech a light speech about an experience about the story that most of us or many of us can relate to but what can make it into a, a better speech is uh, another layer of the onion okay uh, an onion has lots of layers, so does a speech, so does a story. And as many layers as the, the onion has, as many layers as a speech might have, it makes it richer, okay? So one of our lower layers would be, don't sleep out your life, okay? With this in mind, and starting with a funny story that we can all relate to, let's decide where we're going to. Yeah? Um, how about this? Uh, all the, despite all the costs of having hangover meeting with uh, strange friends, uh, after all, you make, you, you make new friends, you have a great time, you have great fun. Uh -huh. And then, if you're a party pooper or uh, someone who just leaves party in the meantime, uh, you basically... That would be me. That would mean you're just missing a lot in life. Okay. Lots of opportunities. A lot of taste of life. Okay. Yeah. Who disagrees? Who agrees? Should we go with this? Um, actually, if we started with negative things, uh -huh. if we develop the negative things and our conclusion is, oh, come on, don't sleep up your life, it's going to be boring for me, I mm -hmm. think listener, because from the very beginning, I know where you're heading. So I would go absolutely the other way around, all the bad stuff, but like go to a great ending, yeah, party, party. Like surprise, because we won't have an element of surprise. Mm -hmm. We start with negative and we'll... Yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. what David said, that's what David suggested. He said, yeah. let's put it in the end that all the, all the bad things happen. If you, if you don't do that, if you leave in half, half the party, if you leave the party in the middle, you miss out the taste of life. Yeah, that reminds me... Can you turn the captions? I'm sorry? Can you turn on the captions so that can understand it? Yes, we probably should. That reminds me of, um, of a machine at the um, Science Museum, Friday, it was Friday. The, the pill machine, you remember? The, have you tried one, one of the machines was like uh, um, pills to enhance your life? And you had, you had like lots of options like, I have a test tomorrow, should I take a pill or not? And you could pick either if you take a pill or not and the consequences were always the same. Like, should I take a pill? You, you pick yes, I should take a pill. And it said, no, you shouldn't, it's bad for you. And then another situation, oh, I'm so tired now, should I take a pill? And if you pick yes, it said, no, that's bad for you, don't do it. So yeah, it, it, it will become a boring lecture, on, on a boring moralizing lecture if you just say, don't party, that's bad. Yeah, so a twist is very important and it's, very, it's a, a good rhetorical device that we should use, okay? So, do we all agree that we should start with uh, all the bad consequences and make it the worst scenario possible and then build up to a conclusion where we find out that it's not that bad and it's probably worthwhile? Okay, so now how are we going to do it? Now we need an ending. 
where we find out that uh, partying hard during a TLI it's not a bad idea, except for the speaker that has a sleepy audience. <laughs> Everybody remembers you. You were the first at the party, and then the next day they go, How are you? I remember you from last night, and then you get to interact more. And then at the next event, people will be like, Oh, you're the person that I'm going to party with. So, and you don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that's a matter of fact. I think they're I thought that that's why people would speak, like, so they could remember you, but no. The secret is you party all night. I'm been doing it wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. More suggestions. What do you think? I would create two heroes. One hero is Mada, who is going for the party, and the second hero is someone who is always oh. at 8 a.m. here and taking a party at the lecture. Okay. And then, and then on the end we see the party. But Mada was all the time on the party, but on the party it has happened something that she can use it to make, let's say, one champion speech. Because she was in the party and she discovered someone, something. Mm -hmm. Other people who didn't go to the party, they just came into the lecture, they were seeing someone, of course, they appreciate to see you, but they didn't find on that lecture nothing what made them better. And Meta has found on the party something who has meant what, what has made her better speaker. Okay. Okay. Do we all agree with this point of view? Do we all agree that it's better to party hard instead of not? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's important. That's important. If we're writing a community speech, we should all think generally the same thing. Okay? Everyone agrees. Yes. Okay. One of the worst things that we can do is to tell our, our audience what we want them to know. The better thing is to show them what we want them to know. So that, that would be a, a good approach, not moralizing them and tell them you should not go to the parties. It's probably a good approach. We'll, we'll show two protagonists, not two heroes, just like you said, we can speak about it later. It's a, just a rhetorical name, term, but two, two different protagonists and then we'll have the audience take their conclusions. So character A did it like this and this, is, this was its outcome. Character B did it like this and this was its outcome. And we can build that in order to lead the audience into what we want them to think, but not be moralizing and tell them you should do this. So I like your idea. Who likes the idea, who disagrees? You like it, okay. We should probably go with that, okay? So we'll just start then, I'll just turn the pages, we can go back here. Now we have two characters. Can't remember how we spell characters. CHA. CHA. There you go. Yes, I did study this in school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two characters. Can you summarize it in, in a sentence? Uh, what's, what's character one and what happens to one? What happens to the other? Character one is the party. Party person, character two is not the party person, it's more the lecture person. Mm -hmm. All want to make good speech. But connect them somehow, make them family, make them like brothers. Okay, party guy and lecture guy. They are from, one is from Warsaw, second one is from Krakow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which, one, which one is from Warsaw? <laughs> <laughs> they, they are two from the same club. The party person is yeah. from Warsaw. <laughs> okay, we'll call the party guy Christoph. I don't know if you agree or not. No, it's just a you uh, sitting up. Meta, Mada? Meda. Yeah, it's you, yeah. So party girl is made. Really? You re you really want to make a story about the person, a real person? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Just a party animal. Party Meda the party animal. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we have two characters, they are both attending the same conference. One is uh, walking the, the light path and the, water, the other is walking through the dark side. So Mada is obviously a Sith and the other one would be a Jedi. No, wait a minute, the Jedi's win in the end, we cannot do that. We can use this come to the dark side, we have cookies. Nice, nice. That's, the, that's what you're wearing your t-shirt in this story, okay? <laughs> Your tagline, come to the dark side, we have cookies. We do have. <laughs> okay.
Okay. So, what happens to Meda, beginning, middle, and end? What happens to the lecture guy, beginning, middle, and end? Decisions. Okay, so what you're saying is forget about the lectures, just drink. <laughs> you're doing it wrong, I'm sorry. You're staying in I, I would go to a positive way, lecture, to make contrast. So lecture guy is, he woke up about 7.30, very fresh, he ate breakfast, uh -huh. two eggs and bacon. Uh -huh. He came, he don't drink coffee, uh -huh. he don't drink water, he didn't eat cookies, mm -hmm. because he was healthy, in good shape and everything. Okay, so what's, what's the downside, downside of it? On the other, on the other hand, yes. it was the party animal who came up with the great idea for the winning speech. Exactly. Okay. Because, okay. She, because she went through something during that night that, made, that okay. gave her an idea for the best speech ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, what we're doing, what we're suggesting is something like this. This is the lecture guy and this is the party animal, right? Exactly. One of them is starting great and it's all downside, down way from there. The other one is starting terrible and then is gaining up momentum. Okay, now we need to justify that, okay? Because you cannot just say, well, uh, this one is a hard worker, he woke up on time, he slept properly, he did his job, and then he, did, he didn't did good, and the other guy was just partying all night, and he didn't sleep, and he didn't eat properly, and he's the good guy in the end. So we need to justify this. I would make three stories. First story, then you have Just five to seven minutes, don't forget that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And she said, and she sees, and this guy, he looks always perfect, and he's taking book and coming back home. Uh -huh. story, second story, she's coming, she's waking up, waking, waking up in the morning, and this few, few Sunday people sweet that she has a headache, she probably drink the water, and then in the morning she also meet that guy, and this guy looks like always perfect, and like always he has the copy book. And the first story is happening somewhere else, and also Meta is in bad condition, and that guy is in good condition. And we are showing contrast with three stories. I have idea. I have okay, idea. So let's try to make it a little more simple. I understand where you're going, but it's still a little bit confused. I have idea. There is a Next day, there is a competition. Okay. In PLI, World Stars. There's a contest. Said there's, there's a table topic contest. For okay. Good. Good. And table topics. Good. Yeah. Because you don't need to rehearse your speech. Yes, good. Good. Exactly. And she make excellent speech. Besides, she make a party and everything. And that is from life because Lena who won the speech, she had a terrible headache or something like that. And she told me she was terrible in terrible condition. And she won a, a competition, public competition mm -hmm. and speech yeah. competition. And uh, we right? can even give the title of the table topic speech. Yeah. It can be lessons yeah, learned. Yeah, brave. Yeah, brave. And we have, right. we have a guy who, for whom lessons learned is everything that he gets from the book. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he speaks about that and he loses. Okay. And we have a real life experience. Uh huh. Who wins. We have a working title here, Lessons Learned. It's not our final title, it's just something that we'll keep here and work with. Okay. I, I was a bit, I was a different way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have no time. This, this is the beauty of, of diversity. Okay. It's not the table topic speech, it's a normal speech contest, five to seven minutes, but this speech contest is, is in three modes. And they are preparing to give because there is some workshop. Mm -hmm. Both have good speech, but let's say one week before the speech contest, but that is going for the party. And she, she goes over, she, she is dying finally because someone has to die in the good story. <laughs> 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 okay. What do you think? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I like this, this justification. It's instant karma. It happened the next day. If it's a, it's a Greek tragedy. It's a three day. It's a three day structure like a, like a conference. It works in three days. So the payoff comes on the third day. So it's actually, it's actually probably a safer structure. It's, it's a valid opinion, but uh, I would probably, I don't know what you think. I would probably go with, with this, which, which is something in the middle. Okay. Uh, it's more, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, and, and Meta doesn't die, so it's good for everyone. Okay? No, she already slept with someone. She just woke up and... <laughs> so that's, that's the background of the story. Okay, so... Okay, so now, now we're going somewhere, okay? We already have a, a starting point. Let's organize it here. So in the starting point, uh, in the first act, we have two characters before and we're going to stick with uh, the night before Christmas, the night before the table topic competition, right? Okay, table topic competition. Okay, the conclusion here is that sometimes, because it's not a rule and we cannot say it's a rule, sometimes it pays off to live life to the fullest and have the full experience and even party hard and not be playing it by the book in order to win the contest because you achieve different experiences. Not because we can use all positive which we mm -hmm. there. So we describe all positive things which were so uh -huh. friends, uh, good experience, whatever. Okay, okay. But, but in general the idea would be sometimes it pays off to to skip sleep, yes. And skip sleep here is still a metaphor because it's directly skip sleep and not, be, not playing by the rules. Close. Well, you can end with a quotation from the Bible. Oh. Everything under heaven has its appointed time. Everything on earth has its uh, appropriate time. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think? End up with this quotation. Can you say it louder? Yeah. Everything under heaven has its appointed time. Everything on earth has its appropriate time. Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should end with Bible. <laughs> that's, that's good. Okay, what do you think? Is this a good, a good finishing touch or it's just a suggestion? <laughs> Okay, more, more, more. What do you think? We'll stick with this. Can we come up with something slightly better? Can we change something on Klaus' suggestion and make it something that we like even more? Come on, we're running out of time. We still have four to five days to reach London again. And here it is spinning. Don't fall asleep on me now, come on. Okay, if we have no better suggestions, we'll just take Klaus's. Meta. <laughs> I'm sorry, didn't get it? A sleep bank? Yeah, you know, sometimes you skip sleep for a while and then you try to compensate. Of course, it's not helping. Oh. You, try to you, know, you know what's interesting? Sleeping Beauty, she sleeps throughout the whole story and then she lives happily ever after. We can do the opposite. Our character doesn't sleep and then she sleeps happily ever after. That's probably good, a good finishing. <laughs> okay. Sleep happily ever after. Okay. Okay. So now we have a, a, a beginning and we have a conclusion, and we'll use one to two minutes to tell this part of the story. One to two minutes to tell this part of the story, which leaves us with three to five minutes to all the troubles and all the, the um, events that happen to the, to the characters during the, the middle of the story. That's what we need to decide now. How do we come to, from point one to point B, point A to point B? Okay, probably I'll just go back to our list and see what our suggestions were. Okay, let's remember all the things that, uh, that the, the good things that can happen, make friends, have fun, dancing, all the good experiences and lifelong memories. Tired but happy is the outcome, so in the end she'll be tired but happy and she'll sleep happily ever after. All the, the, bad, the bad, bad experiences that can happen 
no money, not enough money for breakfast, which is good, uh, missing out on the good lectures, maybe that's something that we should speak about, you're missing out on good lectures, uh, what else do, do you think of? Risk of robbery, bad experiences, lacking memory, you can drive, yeah, probably you can drive is something that we can put into the story, okay, so Maida probably had to walk to the, to the conference and that's her walk of shame directly and indirectly because it's snowing and it's shameful to walk, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> and she'd be trying not to die during the, the way, right? Okay, so any more suggestions? We're already on the red card, which means that at any moment now we need to start the, the actual speech to finish the process. Maida. Mm -hmm. This would actually put them somehow in a scenario together. Okay, so now we're doing our final outline. We have everything decided. We know what we're going to speak about. We know what our theme and our subject is. We know who our characters are, when it's happening. It's the night before at Table Topics. We know where we're starting. We know where we want to go. We know what the message we want to convey is. Now let's just decide the pieces of information that we really want to put into the speech. We'll pinpoint it there and then I'll try to do the first draft live before a studio audience and then we'll finish the, the process, right? No? What does that mean? You're going to cut He's my throat. Going to kill you. In four minutes, you need to start the ending. Oh, can we start in six? I don't know. Let's try. Okay, so. Maida, what's the name of the other character? Quick. Michal. <laughs> Maida and Michal, night before table topics. Okay. So we know all the bad Maida made all the wrong decisions, or did she? And Michal played it safe. Okay, then we'll probably just have to improvise during the middle due to time shortage. And the real big conclusion that we want to achieve is at the table topic contest, Maida wins because of all the experiences, good and bad. Exactly. So, the, the only two things I ever memorized in a speech is exactly what Piotr said. The, the opening and the ending, That's the, those are the only two things that I decide how to start, how to finish, and the rest I have a line out like this and I go on and on and after several rewritings you have a, a speech pretty much well written and well structured, but the first couple of times it's, it's a, an improvisation in progress based on a fully detailed outline. So let's just decide quickly and then do it, the beginning and our ending. I love the suggestion of Klaus over here, we should end with the Bible. Duh. <laughs> it's great. So, how should we start? Since this is a Star Wars based conference, what about Once Upon a Time in a Galaxy Far, Far Away? It's probably a good starting point. And from that moment on, we'll start introducing our characters and everything, and we'll reach our final destination. Okay, one, so. One, once Upon a Time, last Friday. <laughs> exactly, last Friday in a Galaxy Far, far Away. <laughs> Okay, final decisions before we try to rehearse for the first time our speech written in 80-something minutes. Is that, is that okay? Should we start it? Sorry? Where should we put it? Come to the dark side, we, we have cookies. What about the title? I like the title to be Come to the dark side, we have cookies. Because actually, in the end, the dark side pays off. Okay, so this is our title. Okay. 
Everything's ready? Let's go. So. <laughs> <laughs> in a long, long, in a, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there were two Toastmasters, Maida and Michal. They were both applied for a table co topics contest that was going to happen the next day. As usual in a three-day conference, the night before the big event, a princess loses his shoe. No. <laughs> There's a big party, a dinner and a after party. Both Meida and Michal decide to go to the dinner, but Michal skips the party while Meida wants to go to the full experience. <laughs> the day of the judgment comes, Bible, duh. <laughs> and in the following morning, uh, while Michal, is this this Michal or someone else? Uh, that Michal, I'm sorry. Okay, so the next morning, Michal wakes up fresh in his own bed, in his own room, fully aware of what he's done the night before. He eats a healthy breakfast with pierogi, which he eats with the forks, forks whatever. He goes for a run. He goes for a run, exactly. He's into sports. He practices yoga, does a little bit of meditation, reads the Bible, second reference to the Bible, this is great. <laughs> yeah, that you can read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> While on the other side of town, again in a galaxy far, far away, Maida doesn't have the slightest clue where she's waking with. <laughs> she wakes up, tries to pick up the pieces of clothes that she still remembers where she left, and <laughs> or she was wearing, yeah. She looks at the watch, she doesn't have time for breakfast, and she doesn't even know where she is. She decides, she decides to go back and find the conference venue. Once she gets there, everyone's already there. Michal just ran a half marathon, <laughs> read one and a half books about uh, narrative of theory and uh, storytelling and public speaking. While she has to feast, on some old and um, hard cookies and the rest of the milk that she could uh, steal from Vader, the conference cat. Why not? <laughs> the day of the conference moves on. Michal is at its prime. He thinks that everything's going to be okay. He's been prepared. He's done his job. He's done his work, his, his homework. Maida doesn't know what she's going to talk about because she's still remembering or trying to everything that happened in the last 24 hours. When they actually come to the table topic speech, the topic is... Lessons learned. Lessons learned, exactly. Michal dwells about Aristotle, Parmenides, Socrates, and and I, I didn't get what you say, but whatever he said. <laughs> while Meda is honest and she tries to recall the pieces of everything that she's seen in the past three days, she's sure she missed a lot of interesting lectures, but she's learned a lot during the process. <laughs> Um, when the, the winner is revealed, well, we're missing um, an apotheotic finale here, but we're running short of time. When the, the winner is revealed, uh, it turns out that the, first place, the second place goes to Michal, because working hard really pays off. But the real winner of the night is Meida. <laughs> and... Um, at the end, Michal asks Meida, if you have to give me one advice, what that would be, because you are the winner. And Meida, with her mouth full of cookies, said, <laughs> come to the dark side. <laughs> yes. Michal, since then, disgraced himself, and he's never, he's never been to a lecture again. <laughs> and he's still trying to win his first table topic contest. Don't give up. 
that will happen. While Maida retired 100% victorious, and when someone asked her, why aren't you, aren't you competing again? She said, because it's in the Bible, duh. <laughs> As you can see, it's not possible to write a great speech in 90 minutes, but it's possible to have all the workout done and the line out done in 90 minutes. And from this moment on, rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. And if we see each other in one year from now, and some of you, maybe Meira, wants to work on this speech, this is probably a contest winning speech. I don't know. Give your best. OK, that's all. Thanks a lot.